Welcome to Set the Trend Podcast, the podcast that documents and discusses street sound history with present and former and past DJs, sounds and movers and shakers in the, in the history of the street sound game. I'd like to say um, welcome back to my host, one of my fellow hosts. Hello, good evening. Good evening. How are you, Mr. Easton? I'm good, all good. I'm kind of excited today. I think I'm going to... Um... Just sit back and get schooled. So I think our guest, yeah. our guest is uh, you know, very influential. And I think you're right there. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have Reggie here this week, but he'll be back next week. He's just under it a bit, so our thoughts are with you, Reggie. <laughs> we'll see you back next week. But this week, as you're saying, EastEnder, um, I'm very excited. I think we've been waiting with bated breath about this guest. One of the reasons why we are really excited to have this iconic sound and DJ um, here is because we think he might be the blueprint for the family tree on the street sounds. Yes. And we're going to test out that theory this evening. <laughs> Funkadelic sound, East London born and bred. Um, welcome, Skanka. Yep. Otherwise known with your government name as <laughs> Dennis Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> when we say, I know people are saying blueprint, that's a, that's a big mm. statement to kind of make for street sounds. And when we talk about street sounds, we're talking about um, the street sound tree that we grew up under with the touch of classes, with the Cast Manhattans, with the companies, with the mysteries, yeah. with the special editions. Um, and when I say blueprint, the blueprint is something that starts something off. That is the beginning of something that goes forward and goes into whatever and grows into whatever, matures into whatever. Funkadelic is a sound that when you came, you was just playing music. It was just a music sound at first, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, we, actually we was, it was just um, Skanka and George. Um, and we were just DJs that uh, were actually we, we actually we accidentally got got into being DJs because um, we used to hang out in the gambling houses. What's the name? At what age? <laughs> At around fourteen. So wow. basically, I used to make the teas and you know and stuff for all the gamblers in the gambling house. And this is the East End. Yeah, yeah so you got to know it's the East End. Yeah, so. <laughs> this, is, this is the East End. <laughs> so, so, so after school, mm -hmm. I used to go to the gambling house because that's where I used to hang out mm -hmm. and make teas and earn a little money, you know, on the side. And um, and actually, that's how I got my name, Skanka. Because after yes, making the money, yeah, yeah. yeah. no, it's a fun. <laughs> after making the teas and stuff like that. Um, they used to ask me to what they call draw the less, which is take, take, take the taxes from the gamblers. Mm -hmm. yeah, so after they win, they pay me. And uh, if you have an empty chair, they used to ask me to fill the chairs because I could play cards. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this was Kaluki, was what I mean, or 79. Mm -hmm. So I used to, a house used to have to fill a chair in. So the, the guy who owned the gambling house took a shine to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, and he told me to fill the chair. And of course you have to be good with numbers. Yeah, very good with numbers. <laughs> which which <laughs> jumped out when you don't want to. Okay. So, because of that, and I used to always win for some unknown reason. Um, to swag all your yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, one of the elders at that time said, so, so he said, why are you looking skank? Like? No, <laughs> Just a win song. <laughs> so, and that's how I got the name. Let's have the name Skanker come along. Still play cards now? Yeah, still play cards now. Still Skanky? No. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, um, that's how the name Skanker came along. And after that, um, the same guy who owned um, the gambling house, um, he had a basement. So um, me and my partner, George, said, well, what are you doing with the basement? You know, and he said, why? I think we're going to play a little music on a Friday night down there. We said, all right, we can play the music. Um, because George's dad used to have a sound system called Stingray back in the day. Okay. So we used to have all these records and stuff. And then we started playing music um, downstairs in the basement. And before long, 
on a Friday night, the gambling house was jammed. Was the disco what kind of music was you playing at that time? And so at that time we used to play like, you know, a little reggae, um, you know, like, you know, like um, little Bob Marley, um, some uh, old soul, you know, uh, Marvin Gaye, all that kind of little, little stuff. That's what we used to play, you know, so um, like, uh, as I said, George's dad was a, a sound system man. So he always used to like give us records to go and play and stuff like that. And he was like quite... Um, enthusiastic about us playing music, you know? That's good. So, so that was your first journey to turn into DJs. Did you see where you wanted to go there or did you just keep playing until you thought, okay, a specific genre of music we want to concentrate on or... Because what was... But was you even... You wasn't Funkadelic then anyway. No, it was, was not Funkadelic. So you was just... No. What, Stingray Jr.? No, what? Sk no, 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 it was just Skanko and George down, who, who played down the gambling house. It was just mm -hmm. DJs, yeah? Um, and then um, um, the guy who ran the, the um, gambling house, he actually got sent to prison. So his wife said to us, listen, this Friday night thing is going on good, you know, why don't you use, like, just carry it on? I'll run upstairs, you run downstairs. He said, yeah, we can do that. And we got a security guy to run the door. Right. And then me and George just Hold, held the door, held, held, held the door. Free, free admission or was people paying to go? No, we used to pay, used to pay to come in. They've got a couple of pounds to come in. <laughs> so he was making some money, some yeah, money back then, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's, um, and then one day, um, one of the patrons come up and said, listen, I have a sound system, um, which I played down Bidet Road. His name was Lenny Riley. Uh, I don't know if you know Bidet Road, but Bidet Road used to be a shrubbing mm. back in those days. He used to play there on every, every Thursday night down there. And he said, why don't you come down there and, and, and start playing on the set? And we did. So that was your first official out of the zone, as yeah, a man put yeah, it yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? In yeah, by out. That's, that's right. Cool. But you know, you get a big man who come after you, big sound system man, oh, yeah. we was like thrilled, like, yeah, let's go and do that. And you was how old at that time, I forget? Maybe about 15, mm -hmm. 16, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so we went there and, and was playing down there. Did well, you know what he was doing? Well, you know what? What happened? <laughs> you know what? Back in, like, at 15, yeah. you, know, like, you think you're a DJ, but you're yeah. just like... <laughs> that, 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 but listen, from you got people dancing, and what we, when we playing music, we just thought, yeah, this is a good thing, you know? And then he was guided by Lenny Riley, because he was the sound system man, you know, he was the big, he was the big man, you know? So Guidance, cool. and he's like, yeah, man, I'm going to go and play it for a couple of hours, you know? So, yeah. and, and that's how we kind of... Stand your apprenticeship. Yeah, yeah. Stand yeah. basically, yeah. So then after that, I mean, how long did you continue to play in, in the Shubin and, and, and as as um, as Skanko and George? Yeah, uh, for a couple of years, something like that. A couple of years, and then we were approached by um, uh, a friend of ours. Um, his name was Jonah Maris. I don't know if you, you yeah. but Jonah was like back in the days. He was like. Um, friend who, one of these street men who went to every dance in Shubin. Okay. I'm talking about, you know, um, over in, you know, West London, he used to go chicken mm. and all these things. And he took us on the road with him. Wow. So basically we used to, in the evenings, we, you know, at the weekends, we used to go back to those Shubins, mm. you know. Um, Mastering your craft even more. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, actually, just, going there, just going, going there, just going there and listening yeah, to music. Was it DJ? Yeah. You just no, raving. no, just raving. You yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. So and and um, hitting that kind of scene. But see, a lot of people don't really know is that we were we were like we were more soul. We we like soul. Mm. So we used to go like on a Friday afternoon. We used to go to Crackers, mm. Hundred Club, mm. all these kind of clubs. Global Village, I don't know if you remember yeah, that. Yeah. that what kind of soul did you? Because soul's a big, a big genre of music. Because there's, yeah. there's funky soul and. Well, in those times, you know, they, they, the genre wasn't like how it is today. You know, it was just uh, like one brand, was it? Yeah, it, soul was just soul. soul. So you had all types of soul mm -hmm. playing. If you went to Hundred Club, you'd have more funky, yeah, like you know, funky soul mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, crackers, you, you'd have. The same cup of Studio Twenty One, mm -hmm. Monkbridge, mm -hmm. all these kind of places, you know. Uh, so that's where that's where we kind of went and listened to other 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 DJs, you know. And the music at that time was people was 
dancing. Was it? Yeah, a, it was. It was, it was it, all about it, dancing. All about Not rubbing. All, all, all dancing. All about dancing. Yeah. All about dancing. That was on. That, and as I said, that was the soul side of us. Yeah. But remember, we was brought up in the Jamaican household, so we still had that hardcore reggae. rule to reggae yeah, yeah. background as well. So part of um, when Jonah came to us, it was like, yeah, let's do this sound thing. This sounds good. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Lenny was cool, but we wanted to have our own. So, so then we, that we decided, and at that time, you know, twin decks weren't involved in things at that time. No one had twins. It's still the one put on the needle and thing. So in soul, it was very difficult to play soul and have a gap in the music. Mm -hmm. So I decided then, because I had like a, um, back in school, when I was at school, I used to have a band, and I was a singer in the band. Oh, so nice. when I, um, I just said, listen, just like how Jamaican sound systems do it, why don't we do the same thing? Mm. So when you used to put on a soul tune, I used to, you know, when the, um, when, when, when the musical side came on, I used to like DJ on it or sing J on it, yeah. basically. This is where we need rigid. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm, I'm just want to hold it there because, yeah. again, when you say sing J, yeah. we're going to go on to touch on later on if there's anybody else doing it at that yeah. time. Yeah, but go on and tell okay. us. Yeah, so, 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 and that's, so that's what I used to do. So George would play the records, yeah. and in the break, because we didn't have a, a twin deck at yeah. that time, I used, to do, I used to do the MC, mm -hmm. you know, keep the flow, keep it, so you didn't really think that there was a... What did they do? Jokes, okay. huh? What was the difference between what you did to what they were doing at Crackers at 100 Club? Was they just breaking the music and... and no, well, then, most of them was mixers, you know, they, and it was like a talent. You had to learn to mix hmm. beats per second. But and did all they have two like, turntables? They had two turntables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they had two, two turntables. So. How did they have them in New Zealand? Well, it, it was a club thing, innit? Yeah, it was a club thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's only the streets had not called. The streets had no. Yeah, yeah. Then, you know, how we, uh, we got around that, stepping back when we was back in the gambling house, we used to have, uh, there used to be an amplifier called the Techniques Amplifier, and it had to, used to have channel one and channel two. So that's when we used to put deck one switch on channel it, one and switch it. Switch it. Yeah, 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 I remember that. And that's how we used to, that's how we yeah. used to do it. No mixer, no cross, yeah, crossover, yeah, right, right, right. Just, 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 just turn it over channel, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. So when did you decide then to get more professional about it and transcend into this well, um, super sound well, at the time? Well, at that time, you know, as I said, we brought up in East London, everything was a hustle for us. Mm. So we just, you know, instead of, um, hustling like you know out there on the road you know in getting in trouble yeah yeah yeah, yeah. getting yeah. in trouble the whole the whole yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that all comes into play you know yeah. 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 anybody who understands those days yeah that was a hustle yeah yeah, okay. yeah. 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 instead of like a weed like yeah. something yeah. you know yeah. all of that kind of stuff yeah, yeah. but it, it was just an everyday life for us. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, just, just trying to just trying just, to keep alive. Just trying, trying to keep yeah. alive. Yeah. Most of us was one parent, fam you know, one yeah. parent families, mm -hmm. you know, um, and so you know, anything you could bring in and hustle mm -hmm. a little, little thing, you know, that was it. So when did you decide then to take it to Funkadelic? When, when was the moment that you said when 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 Jonah Marius he he asked us to put something together, and then at that time, as going to the soul clubs as we did, yeah. I used to um, love this tune, One Nation Under a Groove, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was just in awe of that record, I just loved it. And I said to myself, why don't we call ourselves Funkadelic? Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah man, can we have played so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and um, and I said, yeah, yeah, that's a good name, that's a good name. And that's how we called it Funkadelic, yeah. you know? So when you started playing now, mm -hmm. so you got the sound name, mm -hmm. um, did you have the following at that time? Um, we had, see, another part of us on, on a Friday, not as well as going to the Shubbings and playing, mm. we also played in the pubs in Canyon Town. Mm. So, again, still pub, George and Skanko at that time, we were playing in, in the pubs. So we had this East London following, 
and I'm, it was a predominantly white crowd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and if you know East End in those days, you know after the pub they had nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. You know. So we 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 had that kind of following. So those people followed us to the sugars. Okay. Yeah. And then we brought up as as young black kids mm -hmm. in East London. You have to ground yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be hard. Your family, you have to be tough. And everybody respected George's family because mm -hmm. George's dad was a DJ yeah. and he played in all the East End pubs. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about, prop, not, the, make, not the silly East End, what yeah. you see that we're talking about. The real East End. Yeah, the gangsters. Yeah. So I grew up with all them boys mm -hmm. and they were all our pals. We all went to the same schools and, you know, we, we so they followed us. Um, and crossed over into the Shubins with us. So you were still playing in Shubins, as in was it still basements, or did you go to houses now? Houses, 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 houses. basically okay. houses. We used to find houses, mm -hmm. and uh, or promoters would find the house, mm -hmm. and then we would we would then play in that house dance, basically. How many sounds at that time was there like you? I mean, what other sound would you say was playing out at that time? Okay, so doing. At that particular time, there wasn't many sounds. So we was like, um, and, and what gave us a, what gave me um, an indication about soul blues, mm. yeah, is that we went to a party, I had a soul blues once in East London, in East Ham. Mm. And we went in there and the guy was playing in there. And I went in this party and the whole party was just rocking. Soul blues, and they were selling drinks at the bar, just like how we were doing it in the shoppings. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, oh man, this, and the music was wicked, mm -hmm. yeah? And the DJ just didn't have non stop, he was just the beats, he was just, yeah. That DJ was Paul Anderson, Trouble Funk, <laughs> yeah? When I went into that place, man, and see how this man had this crowd rocking, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. that's how I said, I could do that. Wow. Yeah, and add this little mics thing and thing because he did, he never had no mics, man. It was strictly music he was playing, mixing on the yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then it was them, man. Was, that was your inspiration at yeah, that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Paul Anderson was definitely an, an inspiration at that time for me. Just to see, he was the first man. That's the first place that I went where they called it a soul blues. Okay. Yeah. So that that that's that's where that like okay. So that's where we're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. So Soul blues. Soul blues. Soul blues. <laughs> Soul blues. Soul blues. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And that was basically, basically you paid to go in, uh, you paid for your drinks, mm -hmm. and you listened to music. That, wow. You know. So then you said, we can do it on that level. Yeah. So you started, what changed then? So how did your operation change now to say, I've seen what Paul's doing. Yeah. Funkadelic now can move up a gear or a level. Yeah. What, what did well, you change it, at the time? As, as I said to you, the, the difference with us was is that we had a big white following. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we had a, a guy approached us. He had a house in East London, and it was called the White House. He was actually a builder. So um, and he said, "Listen, I've got this house. Whatever. I know you can jam it. Um, yeah. You know, I've been to a lot of your functions. Um, whatever." I said, "All right." Yeah, let's take it on. So, how many rooms? I think there was about five rooms at that time. Five, five rooms. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right, you know. But he said to me, you know what? How much are you going to pay us? He said, boy, I don't really know. I can't <laughs> see anything. Whatever, whatever. Nothing's changing. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, that was his, that's, that, that's, that's what his attitude was, you know? So he said, all right, yeah, this is what we make the deal we said. All right. So if we run this place, you pay us 500 pounds. So 500 pounds? Nah, but it can't be a 500 pounds. I said, no man, if we run this place, you pay us 500 pounds. And if not, give us 200 quid. Lo and behold, the house is jammed. 500 quid. This is like 1984? That's 83, I think. 83, that was, yeah. 83, 84. Right. And that was one of the starts of you now becoming synonymous with yeah. soul blues. Yeah. Like that kind yeah. of soul blues. Yeah. 
yeah. and you were playing predominantly soul music to a predominant a mixed crowd. For a mixed crowd, a mixed crowd. As I said to you, so the music, so from about 10 o'clock to around 1, 2 o'clock was pure white people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Majority of white mixed with a few blacks. Mm-hmm. And then as the time went on, it changed into about, you know, 50-50. And then as time went on into four or five o'clock, cause we thought that was late for a, for a house party. Yeah, the house, people were just kept on coming, kept on coming, kept on coming. Like, wow. And you'd finish at what time? That dance we finished maybe about seven, and I thought that was late. Seven in the morning? Seven in the morning. Wow. Yeah. But then you went on to be finishing at, what's, what's the latest time you've ever finished at a blues dance? Boy. With Funkadelic in his time? With Funkadelic, maybe about three, four, four in the afternoon. In the afternoon? Yeah. Just three selectors, yeah? Yeah. Just three selectors on one set. No, it's what one sound, Funkadelic, that's it. We have no other DJs, just one sound. We haven't mentioned the other selector, it's uh, is it P Yeah, PW. PW, yeah. PW was a young was was a young project, eh? Um and he 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 started he didn't start we didn't allow him to play music, right? Until a little bit later. And then he came to us one day and he, he said, you know what, I can mix. Uh, you can mix. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Okay, try <laughs> and, he, and he could. Yeah, he mixed. And he, he, mixed. he actually went away and learned to mix. Yeah. That was the best type of apprenticeship for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, you don't make a man touch it. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, so, when did you, so you was the mic man as well as... Yeah, I was the mic man as well as the selector. Selector. So he was the only mic man. I was the only mic man, yeah. At that time, was there, was there any other mic man in, so, let me get at this. Mm. So, you're going back before the touch of classes and, yeah. and, and all the, yeah. and that all was before, yeah. before any of those sounds. Before any of those sounds. Yeah. Was there any sound that, that was doing the chatting over music, which we are known for, yeah. was there any sound at that time doing what, doing what you started to do? Okay, so, not that I know of, but I also will say that I kind of learned that and part of my thinking of we could do that as well is that when I used to go to Cubis mm-hmm. to Sir George and Sir George sound I I could say I really was the first time I really heard someone doing that to a level that I said yeah chatting over someone chatting over yeah yeah I think his name was Daddy Algy I think his name yeah it was he, and them times in Kiwi's, St George was, was wicked. Predominant, yeah. running, running, running the show. Yeah, running time. Lovers Rock, lovely. And that was, and that, that's, for that, yeah, Dubai, that's before Funkadelic. Mm-hmm. So my mm-hmm. idea actually stems from them. Mm-hmm. But yeah. he wasn't a soul. No, 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 no. but that was before yeah. Funkadelic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But, but yeah. then you took that because even though it might go back mm. to Sir George, mm. but what you actually did, then you took it, yeah. and then you made it into, the, you started the path of this genre, yes. of, of, of yeah. the next generation yeah. to sound. Of something. doing it, of doing it, of doing it strictly to um, a soul audience. Yeah, to a soul audience. And this Sing J style, listen, <laughs> I, I remember hearing Funkadelic tapes, and um, that getting down here tonight, Yes. Under P. Bar Bryson. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. If anybody knows yeah. 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 you'd always yeah. where, where did you get that inspiration for that? As I said, I got that from I, I used to be I was a singer in a band at school. Mm. And um, you know, I always used to like do harmonies in the bathroom mm. and mm. things like that. And <laughs> and you know, listening to my dad play music, mm. I used to do those kind of harmonies. And Coming back when he was doing it on a sound system with the echo chamber and these kind of things, yeah. it, you know, it, you, I think the uniqueness is trying to keep the mic and keep the people entertained in the same while you're changing the record. Yeah. Also, introducing records to people because you know, one important. thing yeah. with with Funkadelic was we played a lot of music which was new to people's ears. Mm. And I always felt that when, you, when you've got a dance swinging, 
you can't just put on a new record and expect people to go, ah, oh, this is great. No. no. So what you do is that you kind of stop the music and let the mics man introduce it and make them feel, say, listen, you know, this is going to be the next big tune, mm. you know? When you did that. This is where you hear it first. Yeah. When you did that, what mm. records come to mind? Um, I would say Milton Wright, Keep It Up, that kind of, you know, um, Foxy. Mademoiselle, Mademoiselle. I mean, yeah, anybody yeah, knows yeah, Funk yeah, Delic, yeah, Mademoiselle. Mademoiselle. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some of your um, anthems though. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, lovely Davey, Bernard Birch. Where did know. you find those music? We found, so, so um, we used to um, have a friend called, um, his name is Des Parks, so he was mm, like, yeah, yeah, an yeah, old yeah, yeah. school, old, old time music man. Mm. And he kind of took us under his wing when he heard us playing, because he was like saying, yeah, 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 but you know, um, we have some good music for you now. Try this record, try that record, you know? And then we used to go, no, man, I don't really know them. You know, you think, mm -hmm. you know, but he said, no, man, play the tune. Yes. And we used to take that album song. And he was actually selling those records, you know? And he used to go, and me and George used to go, and the tune, Batman. You know, but that's how we used to, you, you know, we, used to, we never used to hear them on the radio. We used to actually take albums home and, put play, them by on ear. and play it by ear. But some of those tracks, so Milton Wright could keep it up. Yeah. Bernard Birch, Lovely Lady. Mm -hmm. Mademoiselle. Mm -hmm. Any more tunes? Uh, oh, it was like Ladies 80s. Uh, Ladies Ladies 80s. Them to them you. Them to you. Those are some of our biggest yeah. anthems. Still, still, still stripling. Yeah. yeah, those are some of our biggest anthems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you called uh, Des Parks names because yeah. not many people called his name mm. on season one. Yeah. And he's very influential yeah, man. Des in Parks, the scene. Yeah, man. Des Parks was yeah. a musical connoisseur. He knew music. He sure did. He sure did. He, he, mean, he could tell you who played on what, you know, who was, you know, who was the, the producer and all sorts of things. He, he knew music. So we shouldn't really be bothered though about who played it first. What we should be bothered about is who broke music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because I know there's a lot of big balls business about who played it first, who played it first. But London at that time wasn't yeah. like how it was connected now. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, there wasn't no phones. You're going way back before. Mm. There was no pages. <laughs> there were just phone boxes. There were just phone boxes. There were just, there were just phone boxes. So, Definitely. unless you played out of your ends, mm -hmm. you wouldn't know what a man in West London was playing or what a man no. in North London was playing. No, we but, just, we just, but you we knew just, if yeah. you were bringing a tune, if you, you know, because yeah. people would know. Yeah. I synonymously know them for Madame Zola. I remember we used to go Madame Zola here. Mm. It's like you'd kind of wait for you to play. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Was you aware at the time there was other sounds on the other side of London playing, now, yeah. playing the same kind of music? Um, not really, you know. Um, it's only as time after that that dance I said the the, the White, White House, House dance, yeah. you know, that was like a massive dance, mm. and. Um, I think the world got around. And one of the key things for Funkadelic Sounds, which um, back in our day, is that we recorded everything we did. Yeah? Even then? Yeah, we recorded cassette, everything cassette on, tapes. on cassette tapes. Mm -hmm. right? And because of that, the cassette tape, what we would do, we'd go to Brick Lane to an a, a Indian shop. Cassette down. tapes are way before CDs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going back to one of the original <laughs> formats <laughs> of music for some of your yeah. brothers. We're talking about cassette yeah. tapes. Yeah. D90s, yeah. Um, yeah. ADs, yeah. and like yeah. TDKs, yeah. and BASF B -A -S -F yeah. and yeah. Memorex. We're going back <laughs> to the way. <laughs> and, and just for the record, if you go on Mixcloud or Soundcloud, yeah. there's some Funkadella cassette tapes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there, that, yeah, that you can yeah, hear, yeah, you can and the cassette them. tapes on there, yeah, yeah. so you can see what a cassette tape looks like, <laughs> if you don't know what yeah. it is. <laughs> but, um, and, and um, you know, George is the one who, who, who had that high idea to do that. So, um, and, and actually we picked it up from listening to, to sounds like Saxon, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, and their tapes was everywhere. Yeah, you remember? Yeah, that, yeah. that was a promotional tool. That, that, that was yeah. a promotional tool. But you tool. didn't know it yeah. at the time. Yeah, yeah. at the time. And they were still hard to get hold of. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so what we did was we recorded everything we did. Mm -hmm. We then 
um, after the dance on the Monday morning, we go down to Brick Lane mm -hmm. and we met this Indian guy who had this, had, I think it was a, a 12 stack mm -hmm. um, uh, tape recorder that you put one machine in and he recorded, <laughs> he recorded everything. It's like a modern day yeah, CD player. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and he recorded everything for us and that's how we produced the tape mm -hmm. and then we started to sell the tapes. So you're just making the money out of that as well? Money as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was waiting for your attention. I was waiting to tell my son about something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Remember, I've got the background of, 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 of yeah, the hustler, the hustler yes. and, and the gambling houses. The first place you would take a, a tape to was the gambling houses. Wow. Because a man never thought of nothing to just give you a five pound and take a tape so you could push it in this car and drive. And drive up. Drive. I like other sounds though, at that mm. time. Mm. You didn't only play in your ends. No, no. You was playing. Of West London? Yeah, we, in actual fact, um, we first started playing in East London. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of people from South, mm -hmm. West London coming over to East London. Mm -hmm. Then we found that we got a lot of promoters from other areas, asking us to come out of the area. area. Okay. All right, so our sound at that particular time was me, George, PW, and Patrick. I don't know if you know Patrick Drayton. Absolutely. He's from Lane. Yeah. All right. So Patrick was part of our sound system, but he didn't play music and didn't do anything. But what Patrick did was do all the bookings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agent. Yeah. Yeah. He was the agent, <laughs> yeah. So um, we, Patrick done all the bookings, uh, took all the deposits, mm -hmm. and that's how we started to then play in different areas. I said, boy, we ain't going all the way over to South London and don't get paid. Get paid. So. I, remember the t I remember the tapes I used to hear from West London, you was with Special Edition. Mm -hmm. um, who else was over that was, a, that was a little bit late. That was a little later. bit later. Mm -hmm. So let me go back to when we started going to other areas. Mm -hmm. One of the first places that we ever what we have played as a South system um, in another area was Railton Road in Brixton. Mm -hmm. Cox and Lang. Yeah, yeah, we mm -hmm. played right there, right there on the front line. Yeah. Playing soul. Playing soul. That's a regular place though. And it? let me tell you something, <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because the, when we played over there, we, we could see the crowd loving it, you know, but there was some hardcore man. The way you know, the yeah, man. Um, Dennis Wilson so, and all these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Bozza, all these yeah. people. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Original yeah. Jackson yeah. was out. Original yeah. yeah. Hoaxes yeah. was out. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. They, you know, we, we, as I said, that once again, because of our Jamaican heritage, mm. we kind of knew everybody anyway mm. because of you know, how being around George's dad being a sound system man. We kind of people that coming over, coming to check us. Mm. Um, so we kind of knew people anyway. Like, oh, yeah, why not? Judge, son. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you switch it at that time when you was in those dance? Did you play? Yeah, start yeah, playing yeah, reggae. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 <laughs> you had no choice. choice. You had no choice. No, but you have to play. You really will. Yeah, but one thing I didn't play as as DJs, as you guys will know, yeah, it's not about you. No, oh, it's no, no, the, no, crowd. Crowd. Yeah. the crowd. They have to leave their seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have to leave their so, yeah. even though you, you want to just play what you want to play, yeah. you still have to remember, say, all right. Mm. All right. So, you know, we always had our little reggae selection, or, or, or you know, if we're going to Brixton, we're going to bring our little backup. Yeah, 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 because yeah. we, you know, we're coming from that anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 you know what I mean? So, we have our studio one, we have our little mm. something, you know, when we start, you can hear the bad. <laughs> yeah, those times yeah. always, always remind me of Cookie and Crippler yeah, and Ramsey. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah but next time it was my like ranking gender. Yeah, right, yes. right, ranking. Yes. And I'm going to give you a funny story about ranking. <laughs> so ranking dread at that time. One of the ranking dread was one of the most notorious <laughs> Jamaican gangsters. Just yeah. Google him and you'll see it. All right. So yeah. George used to date a girl in Canyon Town. Mm. Her best friend used to date Rankin Dread, and he used to come over. And we, when we used to go and uh, over to George's girlfriend's, and we used to see Rankin Dread. He said, "Funkin hell, it man, you're a bad soul man." <laughs> <laughs> and he took a shot to us. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, at that time we're going. So you had a pass to go anywhere. Yeah, we had a pass to go anywhere. You know, he's like, yeah, but my son and his fuck and then his bad son and boy. <laughs> so to us, it was like, just picking up your chest again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different areas, you know. Um, and when, when we played at uh, uh, Railton Road, as I said, you know, we met 
uh, another promoter or guys who came and, and asked us to play was um, Guns and oh, I can't believe I can't forget his name. Um, uh, Fliegel. Fliegel Barker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. yeah. They booked, they said, listen, we got a house <laughs> in Campbell Road, New Road. Yes. Come and have a look at this house. It's like a club. Yeah. <laughs> Come and look at this house. Come and look at this house. Tell me what you think. Alright, so I said, Patrick, we're under quite a lot So Patrick went and looked and said, yeah, man, these guys, whatever, whatever. And said, listen, we'll work with you, whatever. That house was massive sure. house. It's a massive house, though. It's a massive, massive house. house. Yeah. You know, and yeah. let me tell you about that house. That house belonged to, I think, his cousin or something. Mm. Yeah, and I think it was a council house. Mm. At the time, yeah, yeah, yeah because the obviously as immigrants, yeah. we got, yeah, yeah. he was in those houses yeah. at that time. Yeah. 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 And um, we booked to play at that dance and let me tell you something the first dance we ever played there when we say roadblock i'm talking about it was a summertime dance mm. i'm talking about the house jam from 11 o'clock all the way around to like again okay. one sound one sound but didn't that come like an every week thing in there no 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 um we had um i think we played about four times for them Mm. In, that house. House. in that house, mm. in that house, in that house, seven bedroom. Yeah, but everybody, you know, Friday and Saturday night, or just a Saturday, no, just a Friday, just a Saturday night, just a Saturday night, mm. just a Saturday night. But that, then again, we recorded that dance, and you know, that time now, my mic, being the mics man, I kind of was more flowing. Mm. You know, it wasn't just you know, here tonight, here yeah, 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 <laughs> it was more. You know. And I kept but you was the first general, as in yeah. our first general MC, wasn't yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. you was before the Barry Whites, you was yeah. before the Mysteries, yeah. you, was before, you was before 76, because brothers yeah. obviously come well, from... Well, 76 was with us. 76. Well, so, so 76 was a... I'm the one that, that named him 76. Yeah. 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 Along with Barry White. I'm the one that you named, named Barry, Barry White as well? I named him Barry White. Okay, well, let's, yeah. hear, let's hear this story. <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, so after that dance. No, no, no. How did you name it? <laughs> 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 no, no, I'm going to go into that now. So, after that dance uh, in Campbell New, New York, yeah. we started to get more bookings. Mm. That's when we started hearing of Ladies Choice, Mystery, Mystery, Lou, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was Ladies Choice, it wasn't Jazzy Mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Jazzy yeah. J, yeah. J yeah. Uh, Bring, um, and. Uh, so we started hearing of them. We played at a club called Paradise That's Garage. Garage. Paradise Garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. So um, we played a few nights, and we started going everywhere. But you know, as an East London sound, back in those days, if you remember, there was always beef between South London and North London. Nothing changes. Though. But with East London, we went everywhere. And to me, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We went everywhere. We never, we never had no beef with nobody. Yeah. yeah? And then you found out that North London man started following Funkadelic because well, they were with Funkadelic, you know, and then started creeping into South and vice versa. You know? So, so those, that's how these, you know, that started to come along. Then. So you was truly a London sound, man. You, you, you became yeah, a London yes, sound. Man. So it wasn't just an area sound. No. It was London and not sound. just an area sound, an yeah. area sound united. United, yeah. East London, East South London, London yeah. North London, West, West London. London. Yeah. One. yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, we started. Yeah. So, and then we started hearing of other sound systems mm -hmm. or soul sounds. Mm -hmm. um, touch a class, um, someone booked us with them, you know, as I said, Five hundred pounds for one to I don't care how much you charge them other people. But Five hundred pounds for one to do it. But you know, it seemed to work because you know we started to know. Um, uh, uh, you know, we met. Well, we knew Paul anyway from from Ladies' Choice as well. That yeah. and we knew um, uh, Jazzy, um, um, Tony Nix. Mm. Thing. We all just became friends over music, mm. you know. I did, we didn't know each other, but we just started to play. You know, you have a little respect for a DJ. You know, I don't know. It's a little bit different now, you know. Uh, you know, it's a, 
know? <laughs> because I watched them, you know. I okay. watched, I watched them, you know. Yeah. It's a little bit different, you know. Mm. It's like if a man come to me and says to me, "Boy, it's gonna go watch that tune." I don't have no problem telling a man what that tune is. Yeah, I see. No. I don't have no problem telling what because music is life. Music is about everybody has to share it. So, so, so was you a bit pissed off when along the lines, along the way, they started covering up their music and, and not telling people what the music was? Well, no, not pissed off, but was you a bit like... No, no, I didn't really, I didn't, as long as we were doing what we were doing, doing I didn't business yeah. what the next man was doing. No. So but if I we came no to you, problem. we could find out what the music was? Yes, man, I had no problem sharing that music. Well, we, we had Kess in a couple of weeks mm. ago and, mm. you know, he said that that's the little boy who used to run up to you and ask you who sings this one, mm. and you was telling him all the titles. Yeah, man, I told him, yeah, I, I, I had no qualms of telling any, anybody about it. But when he got popular, he didn't do the same. <laughs> when he was doing a scamper, he was, he was hustling. <laughs> but, but, but for me, you know, but for me, it's like you know, it's a privilege to tell somebody. You yeah. know, I don't know if you're a DJ or just a just you know a, just a patron coming to my dance. I'm telling you what it is. You know why? Because that's why I'm playing it. I'm playing it because I want you to know it and you to understand it and hear it. Yeah, and I want you to pass that on to it's somebody else. So the music lives on. Yeah, the music lives on, and that's why today you can sit there and talk to me about Foxy, uh, the map, you know, uh, you know, um, yeah, Milton Wright, Virgin Rad, you know. Another classic that we haven't even touched on was Love's Gonna Last, Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I went to a dance and heard that. I heard that. That was a George. No, in actual, what? no, in actual fact, you you actually are right. So, that so George played it, but he played it on the cassette. On the cassette, <laughs> back to the old cassette. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's how they played that thing. And then uh, Jonah, as I came to get, and I don't know if you know Tony Davis and Foxy. They were back in the day. They were like, you know, nice. our, yeah, they were like, you know, big man them times, you know. And we went to a house party, and I went to the party. And I was like, I heard that tune. But it wasn't on the cassette, they Ooh. actually had the vinyl. So I went up to Jonah and said, Ooh, the, the, yeah, my name is Jeffrey, here it is, but when they showed me the cover, you know? And I went, boy, you know, took the information down and that was it. And then you went and got your own copy. In actual there. fact, I'm telling you where I found that, that, found that, uh, that copy. Mm -hmm. We went on a coach trip, me and George, because that time now, you know, Funkadelic, everybody's hearing about Funkadelic. You've got to keep your thing fresh. It's all about going back to, 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 to Des Parks, yeah? He was selling us music. We were getting music from him and everything, but we had to go out and find our own music. And then what we realised that the England market, everyone was starting to charge like the 10 pounds of the 15 pounds. For, price, for, 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 for <laughs> price started to go up for tunes that we went, we, 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 you know? I'm like, okay, so we went on the coach. I went to Amsterdam, yeah, and, and went in Amsterdam we went to a load of um, these old time record shops and we found the Jeffrey about 25 copies in a record shop there and every tune was one gilder. So when you said... One gilder, you know, not even 50 pence. Well, yeah. About 50, 50 pence. pence. Yeah. But when you said that the records... And by the way, a gilder, there was no euros in there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a it was before When you Europe, said the records... Yeah. Mm. was starting to go up in price. Yeah. At that time, do you think a scene was being created? A scene was definitely being created then, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so, yeah. and can we put a kind of year on that? I... This timeline's getting interesting. Yeah, um, I would say 80. around 86, 87. Um, and Funkadelic was born in 80... 86, 87 or 80? No, no, we were born back 83. in 83. 83. Okay. Yeah, so we were, we, were, that, that, yeah. we were doing it as Funkadelic. Remember, the scene now is now changed. Evolving. Yeah, yeah. Evolving. Into, yeah. into more, going back into what more, we know as more blues. Yeah. When we yeah. were it started, it wasn't. It was just like a, a house party. Mm. You know, so it now changed. Now, soul you, now, now you get soul blues. Now you're getting more than one sound on you know in in a dance you know like two sounds you know yeah. so it started to change so you know we need to go search for you know, we just we used to search for music anyway yeah. we're just part of searching 
Um, I didn't get that. Did you buy the, when you was in Amsterdam, did you buy the 25 copies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we bought oh, you 25 bought 25 copies. And told me for how much? Two builders. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more than two builders. <laughs> <laughs> goes back to the hustling, man. Right? Hustling, all right. <laughs> so where did the Barry White thing come in? So, so um, we played with them a touch of class over uh, in Brixton, I think it was. Yeah. We played a dance with them. Uh, and that time it was Tony Nix, uh, uh, Barry, Christy, Christy, was a, there was a, he, they used to have a, he used to, on Touch of Class, there was a, a guy who was a wicked singer. His name was Christy, I think his name was. Yeah, he was like a harmony singer. Yeah, um, Desi and Slim Tim. Mm. They was, that was Touch of Class. Original Touch of yeah, Class. Yeah, yeah. And then one day I heard uh, their Max Man, like, the, at the dance. Mm. And I said, right, don't we hear your song, your song, Oh, you sound like I was saying, yeah, man, we are calling you Barry White. Because me, at the time, I'm giving pure jokes on the mic. You know what I'm saying? So I said that, you know, we have two MC pan one mic. Yeah, I, I, I can I say, me named Skanka and he named Barry White. So, <laughs> I didn't know his name. 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 So you gave him his name? Yeah. And you also gave 76 his name. name, yeah. So where did 76 come from then? Se well, that name, 76, so that's Okay, it. so. When he first picked up the mic on our set, yeah, yeah, he sounded like them old time, um, like remember Stereograph and them kind of yes, sounds, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. we used to listen to all yeah. them sounds, you know, <laughs> Stereograph and and you know all them old time uh, um, jammies and all that, yeah, all yeah, the old time, old time yeah. sounds. Yeah. And he said, yeah, it's sound like old time seventy six <laughs> mics, man. So I said, yeah, man, that's how we <laughs> that's how we get his name seventy six. You're responsible for a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the time is just going, but we haven't even touched on mm -hmm. when you kind of helped our sound evolve. Yeah. Because the sound, the sound did evolve well, yeah. into what it is now. You also owned part of a club, didn't you? One of our synonymous clubs. Which one was that? Was that not Nine Moves? Okay, so, so that, that's, that's later, that's much yeah, later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, but let me go, on. we need to go back. Okay. <laughs> right? When the house dances started to get, at that time, I don't know if you remember these times, we used to have a lot of noise abatement problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the house dances started to get locked down. Now, um, and I have to touch on when we started to go West London and started to play with people like Rap Attack, mm -hmm special edition mm -hmm. you know those those were all sound systems what started to come up at rap attack was a little bit different because he was like a he, he, rap attack alistair we used to just was, was a was a dj yeah he was a mixer yeah, proper mixer and everything, yeah, yeah proper band. and they those were warehouse dances that they used to play at mm -hmm. you know um you got also mentioned soul to soul Mm. Back in those days, you Jazzy. know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they all had H. their own kind of crowd. Mm. You know, Jazzy was like the more Camden, mm. very, um, you know, uh, uh, whatever you call it. Um, cool, they were, th their crowd was a little bit different, you know, diverse, You're di very diverse, <laughs> <laughs> being politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, just just the same way how Paul Anderson was very diverse at that time in, in those times. So. Um, as time went on, 86, 87, the dancers became more hardcore dancers. Mm. You know, a lot of more reggae people started going to those, those dances and started to like soul. Where some man they used to see, you know, think they would never Was it soul or was it reggae? It was, so, 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 here, so here we go again, so, so here, here we go, here we go. If you're a sound system to me, mm -hmm. you play all types of music, okay. yeah? Mm -hmm. We have Funkadelic play 80% soul, but soul is rare groove, it's the same to me, yeah? It's just... A difference in the beats. So it's a different way of describing yeah. some, of the, some, some of the music. Yeah. yeah. So, um, how could I say? Um, 
There's a tune called um, Mooney Prices, you know, you know that? Mm -hmm. Okay. That has a kind of reggae beat, doesn't it? Juku, 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 juku. But he still has that reggae beat, doesn't mm. he? So I didn't think, if I was playing at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the morning, I don't have to play a hardcore reggae beat, I could play that tune. Mm -hmm. Because it had the same groove, you know? So, so that's what I felt me, as DJ Skanker, playing on Funkadelic in the morning. I brought that to it, you know? Instead of having to play reggae where, you know, you fall back onto a reggae if a crowd's getting a little bit restless, you know, and wild reggae. Yeah. Well, you can play a song tune, but yeah, okay. just sound just the same way. You know, I was a big Donny Hathaway fan, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, I used to play this record called, called Love, Love, Love. Love, 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 why you take so long to come to me? Mm. Same kind of yes. nice and Warnell Jones. It must have been yeah, love. Must have been love. That wicked tune. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, those are tunes. And, you know, I was a big Donny Hathaway fan and Sam Cooke. Those were my kind of idols. Mm -hmm. Those songs were different from what Paul Trouble Anderson, yeah, he, Norman, he, yeah. and, and Jess would yeah. play. Yeah. When the dances got you said it evolved and got yeah. a little bit mm, darker. Yeah. Is that what made it was is that was there a split? Did you see a split happening? Well what what because you started off with all these white yeah. people in yeah. dances yeah. Yeah. and then as the years uh, yeah they kind of it, they, they, they kinda disappeared, yeah. yeah. They kinda yeah. Gets, disappeared. Um, um I still also have I you know I didn't even touch on that uh, after a while and playing at those dances, we felt that we had more to offer. Um, and uh, we was approached by um, Jonah again, mm -hmm. um, who was now a, a, a uh, they had an interest in a, in a building. And this building uh, was called Rivers Nightclub. I don't know if you ever heard yeah, of Rivers. That, yeah. uh, Rivers yeah, yeah is where we kind of, so we, we, we had a deal with them and they said, look, we've got Bentley's up the road. Bentley's was a very famous nightclub. If you know, Friday night, Bentley's. Yeah. Saturdays to play in there. Okay. Yeah. One of the unique things about Bentley's is, as a black man, as you know, yeah, it was hard to get into Bentley's as a black man. Bentley's or Kenny Turner? You can <laughs> <laughs> But remember, I'm from Kenyan. So you're good, you're good, you're good. We're good. We're good. So for us, it was like, okay. Um, in actual fact, we were approached by Bentley's as Funkadelic to come and play on, on a Thursday night. As a resident. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, as a resident. Mm -hmm. Played a couple of times, but you know, we just didn't like their kind of vibe. You know, their vibe was kind of. You know, um, you know, they're giving too much people hassle on the door mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So then we were approached by a girl and said, look, we've got this pro property over in Cannon Town. What do you reckon? I said, yeah, but you know what, Ben is a big club. You know, it's always jam. I said, you know what, we'll, we'll take it on. So our deal with them was, we'll play, and we'll play for free. Mm -hmm. yeah? £500 pound finish. No. This was, <laughs> this was our deal. We'll play for free. Mm -hmm. You give us the door. Oh. Okay. Yeah? So you keep the bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? You keep the bar. Mm -hmm. And we'll pay the security. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, for them, it was, well, they ain't got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. The place is empty anyway. They've just started this new business. Well, first four weeks, Hard work. 25 people. Second week, 30 people. Fourth week, 40 people. You see when it comes to six week? <laughs> 200 people. 250, 300, 400, 500 people. Funkadelic by themselves. Funkadelic by themselves. And um, I would say we, we would you know, our claim to fame is that we locked down Bentley's because now everybody was coming to Funkadelic. 
Yeah. And little after that, Bentley's closed down. So, you know, and, and you know, then we brought over guest sounds, mm. special edition. Yeah. Um, those tapes are out on the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. 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 so we brought special edition in as a West London sound. We brought in guest DJs um, to, uh, to play with us. Yeah. We've got about 10 minutes left and I okay. do need to touch on some things from you okay. before, no before we go. So, Night Moves. Yeah. You became part owner in Night Moves. Yes. With Trevor, the yes. late Trevor. Late Trevor, Trevor. Yeah, Spencer. Um, Spencer. Mm -hmm. Lloydie Peck was involved at that time Peck, as well? Yeah. Me and basically, me, so we'd moved to. Let's. Let's do that. We moved to. Let me slide back the oh, slide. we got 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> that's why. That's, that's why. <laughs> so. You're going to come up for a round so, table anyway. So after. So, so, yeah, after. After. Um, Rivers. Hmm. Um, we, you know, we, we, we started playing little circuits other than that. And uh, we played with company. Mm -hmm. We played, you know, we knew Den from a long time from Sabrina yeah. Sound. Um, we played with loads of sound systems mm -hmm. at that time. And then um, we got to a point where we said, you know what, this acid house music and stuff started to come involved. And I wasn't really feeling that. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. fell out of love with yeah, yeah we kind of fell out of love love with that and everything. And that particular time, as in eighty eight, my brother, as you know, Lennox Lewis, Lennox Lewis, the the um, the the the, 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 the <laughs> two time or three time world <laughs> three time world champion, champion <laughs> of the world, <laughs> became um, became Olympic champion, mm -hmm. and you know we kind of I kind of. Jumped on that. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Big old brother there. Yeah. We kind of fell out of music at that time. Yeah. And moved over to that. But yes. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. So. So. So I went on. I went on to that journey, which is a whole new. I know. I was going to Yeah. Because I was going to say when I first yeah. met Lennox, he yeah. was around Saxon. Yeah. And, and you told me an interesting thing because. Yeah. Even though he's around Saxon, I was a youth them time then. As I said, mm -hmm. Lennox was more around mm -hmm. Dennis and, and yeah. Muscle and yeah. Levi and, and yeah, Tipper yeah, and, yeah. and yeah. some of the other generals who was around at the yeah. time. But you said he actually came looking for them. Yeah, he came, he came going back to the tapes. Yeah. The tapes used to, Saxon tapes went all over the world, oh, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and it obviously reached the Canada and he had these tapes and he said, why is that England song? Um, Dennis, you, we can't find this song in your Saxon. You say, yeah, man, they're more like South London, man. We know them, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's how, you know, he went and searched and... and, and, and he used to come to some of the blues dances. Yeah. I remember seeing yeah. him with the blues dances, yeah. some of the blues yeah, dances. He used to, yeah, he used to go to Rivers um, yeah. when he, in, you know, in those times. Um, when he, and he wasn't even Olympic champion at, at that time. Um, he was, when he came over at that time, was where he was the Commonwealth champion. Yeah. yeah. What's his love of music? So he's so he's love of music. He's reggae now, isn't he? He's, he's really he loves all music, you know. Lennox yeah. likes all music, you know. And you know, part of my thing is when I start when I was involved in the Lennox uh, um, story, is that part of my thing is I was part of the entertainment uh, in the management. I take I took care of all the entertainment. Mm -hmm. So when you see Lennox walking in with a ring walk, yeah, and chase those crazy bar names, that's that was, your that, that was me. Did you get paid for it? Did you get paid for it? You know what's so funny? funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. The things that you see on Sky Television now, yeah. we are the ones that implemented all that stuff. Yeah. All yeah. that ring walk, that thing with the, with the, um, uh, the fireworks yeah. and all yeah. that. Yeah. It's all part of it. So they go back and look, look at the thing. You'll see how it changed, how, they, how it all changed. And, you know, music it's coming fun. in the ring. Then, you, then, you, then you're getting artists coming out with did you did you ever get a fight though to mm. not keep it reggae to not keep it original to us to our culture no, was, you know well, did, 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 did they say to you i oh, know you can't play that you have to play some pop music or you want to hear something well a bit you know what they would have loved to say that you know but they can't tell the champion when champion. <laughs> right. cool. some champion some champions champion. they can <laughs> some champions, but not this champion <laughs> <laughs> you understand? and at the end of the day look we're fighting under a British flag. Mm. We're coming from England. Yeah. But we have to show our little heritage. And exactly. sometimes you do it in a little subtle way. Mm -hmm. And that little subtle way is coming in to the boy. music mm. yeah, that we were brought up on. Yeah. 
yeah? Reggae music, and it actually told, it told our story, yes. yeah? So, you know, do you remember what happened? Do you remember, um, what was his name? Uh, the Jamaican boxer um, from Hackney. Uh, Hunnigan? Lloyd Hunnigan. When he came into the ring one time, remember he's with the British flag when, when he won the world champion. The next fight, he come in with the Jamaican <laughs> flag and flew away. You know how quickly them people turn on yeah, yeah, yeah. Switch. You gotta watch those things. So yeah. knowledge is key. So you just step back, watch it, and say, okay, we got to deal with them neatly. And then you went into the dance hall scene before we finished. You went. You, you was part of the dance hall scene. Yeah, as well. part of the dance, dance hall scene. Music is my life. Champagne you know, splash. Music, champagne <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. You know. Um, obviously, after to Lennox uh, stopped boxing, that I went to live in Jamaica for uh, you know a good uh, ten years, mm -hmm. and um, just became part of um, that promotional scene, the British link up promotional mm -hmm. scene. And um, Lady Pear, Lady Pear called Dennis Willis, the other of Dennis Willis, the big part of that. Yeah, yeah, man. So, so you know, music is my life, yeah. man. I love music, and you know, no, matter, no matter what it is. And now you come back in, you kind of, well, you know, I mean, the doors open because you've started playing back in our scene. Yeah, well, again. yeah. You've come back home. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Um, I was invited. Uh, Ratty on his fiftieth birthday. Mm -hmm. Asked me to come and old play. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Legs, legs. Call me from the edition. East End, they asked me to cut. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which, um, you know, but, you know, I really loved that dance. That was, a, you know, it's the first time I thought, yeah, man, they got this right. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So. so you're back for, so you're back home, so you're back for now. So we can look forward to seeing you with guest appearances in, in, yeah, in some of our dances yeah, again, playing, definitely, playing those good old... Definitely. I don't, I don't think... It's, what I, I don't want to... What I don't want to do is, is, is you know, uh, start playing at everybody's like You've got to keep yourself... Exclusive. Exclusive, yes. you know? So, so I'll, I'll pick and choose mm. the dances that I play at, you know, to bring back that old-time rare groove and some of the new grooves, the new mm. Neo Soul and stuff. I'm actually also on um, Global Soul Radio. Mm -hmm. uh, I play there every Wednesday between the hours of 11 and 1. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just after um, company. And you know, me and Dennis have been years, friends for years, so, so we share music, we love music, you know, we, we, we you know, go, go to each other's houses and, 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 you know. Last two questions. Yeah. Do you think Funkadelic over time has gotten the respect? That it's, that it's been due? Yeah, I, 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 I think so. I, I, and you know what? You know when I, when I realised that, um, when I played that the Legends, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that first dance, you know, I played like about 10 classics. Mm -hmm. And to me, that dance was electrified. When I played those tunes, you know, it's like you think, like everyone's, yeah, because it was the original sound playing the original yeah, songs, yeah, yeah, you know, so, so just yeah, everything clicked together, you know, and um, and also at Matty's dance, it, you know, I could see that, um, you know, once again it was electrifying, you know, so a lot of the younger generation. I remember in those cassettes that their parents used to hear. Yeah, you, play, used to play, play it at home and they were remembering the tunes they were singing along as we called it, was it karaoke? It was karaoke. Karaoke night. Karaoke night. <laughs> karaoke night. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because those are the classics. Last question. Any regrets? About your journey playing music? No. I've had a fantastic life, trust me. Yeah, in, 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 in <laughs> no, 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 no regrets. regrets. No regrets. I've had a fantastic life, whether it's the music, the boxing, the thing, all part of entertainment, it's all one circle. I've met a lot of good people on the way, a lot of great DJs. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I must mention this. Uh, I went to your, 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 your guy's dance, the Coco White. Coco White, yeah, me and Ali. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. yeah? yeah? And let me tell you something, that brought me back to the days <laughs> where, I can, <laughs> no, man, where I can say that, you know what, these guys got it right. Are you, so you do one of them for us then? Yeah, so we yes, can ask of the course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course.
course of it. You know, and what, what was unique about that, that dance was I saw the old and the new. You know, in one room was the, was the, the, the sons and daughters, mm -hmm. and the dads and mums were in another room. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which was, which was, you know, and they crossed over, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, it was a great night. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Yeah. So, I think we've well, kind of bottomed out the blueprint. <laughs> and um, we'd just like to say salute. Salute. Salute yeah. to Funkadelic. Yeah. We're going to have a round table. We'd like to invite you back with some of the other yeah, Raven definitely. Rhythm legends. Most so, definitely. You know, and just delve into things a bit deeper. Most definitely. But yeah, it's been fantastic having you. And yeah, it's it's so fantastic that you're sharing, our, sharing that your journey with us. Because some of that stuff, he's yeah. our banana. Of, yeah. the, of the music industry and I'm, and I'm definitely a, a student who just wants to keep on hearing yeah, and it's great hearing some of the stories that you've got to tell. Yeah, Shouldn't be lost. No. And, definitely that, not. and you're part of our legacy in the street sounds definitely. business. In a very yeah. important way. A very important way, a very important and way. And I'm glad we've got the social media and all that still out now and the mixed clouds and all that where they can still go back day. and listen to it's those both, dances. There's, and there's those a both party one on there that's yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. Really <laughs> good. I think the best one though is the one with Touch of Class. Yes. Myself. They're all good. And, yeah. <laughs> They're all good. They're all good for different reasons. They're yeah, all yeah, good. Yeah, definitely. You know, and, you know, just hearing the stories about Bentley's. You know, yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned Bentley. I can't yeah. not forget Derek Boland. Derek Boland. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Fantastic. Even, 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 yeah, man. Good. Even listening now, you know, um, uh, um, at the the party last week and I've been hearing, um, you know who I like as a mics man? Who yeah. reminds me of me? Mm -hmm. Hollywood. <laughs> he would love it. He would love to hear that. that, man, that because yeah, we used to go, good. Yeah. yeah, but we used to go Funkadilly. We used to go yeah. and that listen man, to Hollywood is good so. because he, he knows about entertainment. It's all about yeah. entertainment. It's not, it's not about, about just us. lyrics and this. Yeah, man, it's about enter entertainment. Don't talk Even him up too jokes. much. He might start trying no, to charge no, man. No, 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 Thank you, yeah, no, no, no. Skanka, yeah, no, no. Mr. Dennis Lewis. Thank you for coming up in, yeah. on, on the podcast. And that's it for another edition of Set the Trend podcast. Remember, you can catch us on YouTube, Facebook, and on Probably iTunes. Back. So just go and Google, share, like, and just spread the word. We'll see you for another episode, series two, very soon. Thanks a lot. See you, see you later.